Hey guys, welcome back to the Getting Me Multiculturally podcast. This is episode number 35 and I am recording this from the comfiness of my couch because I don't want to sit on the office chair anymore and the other reason is because I have this cute little pillow here by my side uh, since today's episode sponsor is going to be my uh, online shop that you can find at uh, shop.editvashadi.com and there you can find all kinds of fun things for you multicultural couples just like this pillow it says uh, American Hungarian home on it you can customize it to based on your nationality or your culture uh, there are also some t-shirts there multicultural planner stickers and miniature bottles where um, I put uh, flags in it for different countries and you can also personalize that with little notes in it proposals it's good for uh, wedding favors and whatever you can think of so uh, that is today's sponsor that I'm super excited about and now let's get into today's topic We had to deal with learning a new language, communicating with the love of our life and being able to connect with him or her and the family and friends in a complete strange language. And now on top of this, we have to plan a wedding considering all of this, considering that there are going to be guests who speak different languages than uh, you guys are in your relationship. And here, I'm assuming that you are planning a wedding and that's why you're listening or you're simply planning maybe a multicultural event or you're just planning to get married and this is something that uh, you've been thinking about how you can um, incorporate in, in two languages or multiple languages into your wedding. I don't know about you, but there are some days for me that even after speaking and using English mainly in my life for 10, 11 years now, I still feel like I should be better at it. I shouldn't be making these mistakes or how come I couldn't make this language so much more uh, of my own throughout these years? Why am I still mumbling? Why I still can't find the proper words or proper uh, phrases or some slangs and uh, or even my accent that what, how come it didn't get better or changed? But then there are some days when I am talking so fluently and chatting with my husband uh, who doesn't even think about it anymore that I am a foreigner or that I even have any language barriers. You know, I sometimes notice that when I'm talking to strangers or when I'm nervous, when I do some type of presentation or interview, I get really nervous and that's just messes up my brain and I forget things. I forget some words. Um, you know, I've been doing this podcast, which helps me a lot to force myself to develop this knowledge and uh, develop my language skills and to just overcome this fear that I have. But uh, it's I, I still sometimes feel um, that I should be better than I am after all of these years. I actually had an episode where I was sharing my personal experiences and story about me growing up in a multicultural country and uh, uh, how I was learning a new language as an adult in a foreign country for love and what were some of the easy ways for me to learn the language and I also shared a story about how somebody told me that I shouldn't teach my kids uh, Hungarian because it's not worth it. It's just not a language that people should put effort on on learning. And also sharing this weird self-consciousness and shame of speaking uh, my own mother language with my kids in public. So anyway, I feel like I'm getting off the topic now because we're talking about weddings. We're not talking about learning a new language. Hopefully we're already over with that. We are good with the language or as much as we can. And now we need to plan this big event when we're considering everybody. I had some episodes when I was talking about 
combining multi cultures in a wedding or tips how to plan your multicultural wedding episode one and five uh, but today I wanted to chat more specifically uh, about incorporating the language into these multicultural weddings now Maybe you are lucky enough to have a multicultural wedding where everybody speaks the same language, right? So like US, Canada or America and Australia or there are countries that use Spanish and uh, Spain and Mexico. I don't know, maybe some of them will feel offended because they will say that it's a completely different uh, Spanish uh, language and culture. But it does get it does make things a little bit easier. Let's just be honest. So if we have a little bit more uh, contrasted language differences then that's really when the challenge comes and especially if you have family members who absolutely know zero about the other language so you really want to feel them included too especially if there's 50 50 uh, ratio of people who are coming to your wedding that are not speaking each other's languages And we really shouldn't forget this important part of our wedding because it's just not something that is talked about in in, uh, weddings that are not multicultural. It's something that people wouldn't consider when they're planning their wedding. Maybe if you have a, a wedding planner who is not even thinking this option because it's just not something usually people would want to plan around and uh, you want to make sure that especially your ceremony if not even all the wedding because maybe you can't do everything that you want but the ceremony is the most important part where you want to feel like everybody is included and you want to make sure that everybody understands what's going on. Okay, I wanted to wait until the end of this episode to share something exciting with you guys, but I just can't wait. And uh, so I'm just going to do it right now. I have a new product in my online shop, which is a bilingual wedding invitation. It is a digital, so you can fill out with your name and all of the information. And I am just so excited to finally have this product because I saw a lot of need for it. And it's something that I would have loved to have in on my wedding uh, if I would have had a wedding. <laughs> But anyway, this is one of the reasons why the Getting Made Multiculturally shop is sponsoring this episode because I am very excited to offer this for you guys and I have a 50% off coupon for you to get this discount and to get the code for this discount. You just go straight straight to editvashadi.com forward slash bilingual wedding and that's all one word I'm gonna put the link in the show notes if you want to check it out and it is a digital product so you would download it fill it out every information that you need in it and just send it to your printer lab and ship it out to your guests and it is uh, something I think that a lot of you can uh, have a really good benefit from it. Okay, so let's see how can you incorporate different languages into your multicultural wedding. First of all, let's try to answer a couple of questions that will maybe help you uh, figure this whole thing out. One is, what is the main language that most people use and speak? People meaning the guests that you invited. Maybe even you can send out a questionnaire or ask them if you don't know exactly because maybe you have people who are their main language is Spanish or Hungarian or Italian German uh, but they also speak English like for my example my family is Hungarian but knowing that they also speak English that's something that we can consider uh, that we can use English in our during our wedding because even though everybody came from a different uh, culture and country and language group uh, they are still going to understand your wedding ceremony do you have more than two languages that will be uh, that will need to be incorporated in your wedding do you have grandparents spouses of your relatives friends that are coming from different countries 
like for example for me i would maybe have had uh friends that came from serbia or italy and that it would be english hungarian italian serbian so there would just be so many people coming together from different language groups so you know often when you are a multicultural relationship you develop relationships with different other nationalities which is really exciting and you want to invite everybody so you kind of have to figure it out and consider you know maybe your partner freshly just learned your language and you guys feel comfortable using both but his or her family doesn't because they are not how you guys are they don't have to learn that other language so kind of make this list if it's not obvious and try to also consider even if they're speaking a different language would you would they be able to understand english or other languages that you guys chose to have in common a second thing that you can think about and consider is what is the language that you feel the more comfortable speaking in or that you feel like your emotions would come out better and you would just feel stronger to tell your vows to your partner in that language because uh, you know if for example on my wedding i said that my vows uh well, let me let me just uh, t- take a step back and tell the story a little quick that when we applied for our marriage certificate and made an appointment at the courthouse we just got a paper from the judge that had kind of like a it wasn't even a vow it was just a statement that you would tell to each other that i promise to to love you and care about you for the rest of our life and be faithful and so that was given to me and i had to not learn and memorize it but at least to know how to read it and repeat it after the judge which was back then really really hard and challenging for me because uh my english was not that good Uh, actually there was no English for me at all and especially using these difficult words and sentences so it's really funny just watching back the video and seeing how uh, first the judge tried the judge tried to just tell me like a sentence to repeat and I got stuck and then he after that he was just saying word by word and I was just repeating it slowly as I knew what they mean because I translate them before that but it was just something that i wish i would have maybe put some time and effort into uh, having my own vows even if they are in hungarian just something that i can speak out of my heart to the person i love and feel that emotion and feel that realness because you know foreign language i think for some of us would forever feel foreign so in some cases we can express ourselves with our own language easier and it's a plus if your partner would understand what you're actually saying but even if not if there's somebody who can translate that that is still like a a very sweet gesture that you can uh, kind of gift it to your partner or if you're speaking more than one languages which one is that you feel the most connected to as far as music goes or dancing singing or maybe there's a language that you and your partner used to use or are still using or that's how you met for example italian we used to speak in italian with each other just a little bit until i learned how to speak english and it's a fun memory a fun connection that you can have with your partner so don't forget that and don't just try Try to focus on what's the main language that everybody would understand. All right, so here are some of the things that you can do on your wedding day. First of all, have the ceremony and the speeches that you're going to have uh, during reception in two languages. And there are multiple variations for this. I'm going to try to talk about all of them so we don't miss on any kind of uh, variation and uh, considering that all kinds of scenarios because it doesn't matter if you and your partner have a language that you speak together. Uh, You still need to consider the guests and them to feel included, especially if everybody's sitting and looking at you. And if they don't understand what you're saying, that can 
become a little bit boring or awkward for them and they're gonna think that uh, why did they even get invited if they don't feel included. So you can have a multilingual or bilingual efficient or bilingual priest, whoever would uh, marry you. So they can help you actually to structure the whole speech, uh, the whole uh, ceremony, what is going to happen. So uh, because they probably have some experience and knowledge about running, uh, I don't know if you say that, running a multicultural wedding or uh, proposing it or marrying multicultural, bilingual couples who can maybe speak a sentence in one language and then translate that one sentence into the other language. So they would just say one thing twice, essentially, or just say the whole um, ceremony part and then say it again uh, on the other language, which is a little bit longer, but for people who are listening, they can understand the flow a little bit better. It's just kind of a preference that you would have. Or you can have somebody, another person, maybe a, a relative, a sibling, or maybe a friend, or maybe a professional translator that is standing by the efficient or by you as a couple or on the side of the family that doesn't understand to translate. And as the efficient is talking, Uh, he or she can immediately translate that uh, sentence to those family members. So maybe you can even think about doing the seat arrangements based on languages. So you can have people who are uh, helping them and translating immediately to just focus on those people who don't understand what's going on. And then when it comes to the vows part, uh, maybe you can say your own vows on your own language and then have the officiant or the translator tell it to the guests and maybe they can even tell it to your partner. So your partner knows what you just said, but it came from uh, from you, it came in your language and then there's just a translator that's standing there and just repeats everything. And then you guys can use the vice versa, vice versa, vice versa. <laughs> uh, on the other side, the reverse away. And it's not just because of the two of you. It could be beneficial if you guys are not speaking uh, each other's languages or you, one of you doesn't understand the other one, but also for the guests to understand what's going on and it can also have a lot of laugh and fun into all of this uh, speech and vows you can you know spin it around a little bit and so here's another example that I think it's really cute and can be very practical and efficient is let's say uh, you decide to have your ceremony in English when the officiant is talking but you do have some guests that speak only Spanish and some of them that speaks both and maybe you make that decision okay we're just gonna use English because that's 80% of our guests what you can do is decide that you're gonna do the vows in Spanish so because that is your home home language that is your mother's tongue and uh, send out these cute little notes and papers or Just put them in your program book if you have having any of those flyers or whatever to people who only speak English. Uh, Just a little translation of what are you about to say in Spanish and they want to understand and they can just read it and uh, see what are you saying and it could just have a nice little touch to it. Maybe you can even put both languages by each other so If they are confused why they're having this little uh, paper, then they would know like, okay, she's or he's saying these words and here's the actual translation. So that way you don't have to interrupt or disrupt the whole ceremony by having a translator or by or making it longer by having the efficient say everything twice to just send out these papers programs to those who want to understand one language or the other and have them read if they're interested about what your guys are saying. You can also have maybe two vows. One is that comes from the efficient who is uh, telling you what to say. 
that you such and such promise that you're gonna blah 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 and have those ones in one language and then when it comes to telling each other your personal vows then you can switch to a different language and both of you can just use that other language and that way uh, you kind of know that okay uh, they promised to each other we heard it we understood it and then they said their own little vows in other language but maybe that's personal so it's okay if guests didn't hear it, like they, they heard the um, official, sort of the official vows that you told each other and they were just maybe not understanding the personal ones. And going back to using a translator, I think it's a really cute idea if you ask uh, some of your family members or somebody who is important for you, a sibling, a future mother-in-law, if they would be willing to come up and help you translate, that would give this really nice connection and bring the families together so they really feel included and they feel like the, you value them and their knowledge instead of just hiring a stranger or a translator. Then if you feel comfortable enough, you can maybe say your vows in the, your foreign language that you don't speak, but you just memorize these vows to tell it to your partner. Maybe don't tell her or him, just surprise them with this uh, vow that you are uh, memorize and learn. And uh, or you guys can just decide that both of you are going to do that and just you know, for example, Adam would say a vow in Hungarian and I would say a vow in English. And that way they understand, his family understands and they will probably think that it's so thoughtful that we are using each other's languages to express our commitment. Uh, so that's also a really, really cute idea if you're brave enough or if you feel uh, really comfortable on learning uh, vows in a foreign language or maybe you already speak it in some way, in some level. So it's going to make everything a little bit easier then. Or another really cute idea is, for example, if your wedding ceremony is, let's say, in English and you can decide maybe to spice it up and just add some words here and there that come from a different language, which usually use words that everybody would kind of figure out what they are, even if they don't speak it. For example, you say, like my husband, da -da 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 -da, or like my future husband, and then you use the husband with the other language. For, so, for example, like my future uh, fir, because fir is a uh, husband in Hungarian, <laughs> and that would uh, make people laugh, make people pay attention, or have fun with it. It's not, I know it's not a really serious ceremony. If that's what you're having, then maybe it's not a good idea. Or if you want to make sure people really understand what's going on, it's not a good idea. But, you know, it's just basically uh, based on whatever wedding ceremony you're trying to have. And beside the ceremony, there are also speeches that people will say. It's usually before or during dinner time or at the reception. And my tip would be that keep them really short because if you have people who doesn't understand the person talking, then you don't want it to take too long. Or maybe you can ask the person to write down what they're going to say and have it translated, put it in your program book. Or if you don't want people to read it ahead of time before the person is actually speaking, you can just... Um, send them or put them out on table, set them up or just give them out uh, while the speech is happening or you can just find some cute ideas how to, I don't know, right now I just thought about this idea to just put them under the chair, you know, when they hide some surprise under it and just say like, now everybody pull, thing out, pull this little note out of your chair, not out of your chair, out from under your chair. Uh, you know what I'm saying. I'm just mumbling here now. Anyway, um, yeah, that would be one of my suggestions and ideas. And also, like I already said, it's really cute and funny to have your partner surprise by saying even just a few sentences on their own language during the ceremony, maybe at the reception, if you have a speech, 
uh, you saying it in front of everybody is just a really cute gesture and just shows how important you guys are for each other. And just don't forget that these ceremonies and vows, these alternative ideas can maybe take twice as long as they usually would if you have a translator or everybody is using multiple languages for the ceremony but if you're okay with that and all what's important for you is to everybody to understand what's going on and understand every word and you're okay with having it twice as long that's completely fine but uh, when you're planning your wedding just be aware of that another thing you can do is have your wedding invitations your website uh, the program book Make everything that you can, every postage that is written down, every sign, a bilingual or multilingual. I think that's pretty obvious, but sometimes we forget about it because it's not uh, so common. I think it's actually if you are, for example, sending out these bilingual wedding invitations, you're kind of setting up the expectations to your guests that what can they expect? What kind of wedding is this going to be? Are they going to speak in two languages or they don't really care? They only have it in English and that's what the whole wedding is going to be about and they're not going to mix any other languages. But if you have already mixed languages in your on your website or on your wedding invitation and they see that how playful you are and how you equally want to value both of those languages, that already sets up that foundation for your guests to know kind of what to expect. So if you need one of these bilingual wedding invitations, you can grab one of mine that I designed And ultimately, make it fun, spice it up. You don't have to think it too seriously uh, unless it's a very serious event. But it's fun to just mix the languages on the card, on the signs. Maybe, you know, if you are having English and Spanish languages, you can use Spanglish. Like they have some words that they made up and it's just fun and connects people and make people just talk about something or laugh, tell stories. Uh, So make it really personal, even based on the terms that you guys are using in your family. You know, you can insert some inside jokes or quotes from movies or quotes from songs. Um, It kind of brings the families and friends together, especially if the families never met each other before and they don't speak each other's languages. It just gives them something to talk about, something to laugh about, especially if it has it has a story with it. And it's just important to have this constant reminder for the guests that this is a multicultural uh, marriage and uh, keep that diverse culture alive and make everybody just feel included uh, and feel as one big family. So like I said, you can make your signs, table numbers, uh, door signs, games, food, drink signs, all that you can think about. Mixing languages, making up your own, translating them, writing it down twice especially if you are having some foods and drinks from different countries and cultures that maybe you think that some guests won't understand where it's coming from, uh, then you can write them down, maybe write down also the ingredients, what that is, what is it called, how is it pronounced, and just put it by the food, by the drink, so when people are picking up, they and you know just know what it is. And you can also... When you're designing these cards, think about, okay, do I want to have two separate cards to put the names on it separately? Or you can just have, uh, you know, like double-sided wedding invitation or have one paper where you put the two words together under each other or whatever way you like it. Just color it differently or anything like that. Same on a website. Uh, Think about writing about your your story, how you guys met, write it on both languages, find videos that are on both languages. When you are designing your invitation, you need to think about different scripts. If your language has a different script or letter that uh, other people or maybe 
that you wouldn't be able to type out or other people wouldn't understand how to uh, say it and that's important for you you need to consider that too also if you have a dj or mc who is bilingual that can be a really really good advantage to have just to have them announce you guys or talk a little bit about what music they're going to play or what is about to happen if there's a kick cutting or a first dance and they can announce all of these things they can also mix music together different ones that you guys choose to have at your reception maybe you have a announcement that is kind of important or speeches so it's really good to have a dj or mc that uh, no understands the flow and can maybe say even just some fun words to you guys if uh, you can't find somebody who actually speaks it in a native level but um, just the effort even if just the songs are mixed that's also already a pretty good and fun thing to do if your photographer is bilingual that is also a really good advantage especially if you have a lot of family members that uh, don't uh, understand the language that where your wedding is uh, going to be at or the language you guys are speaking mainly because then they can give directions you know talk to the uh, photographer and make sure that uh, they feel comfortable with this sort of say stranger photographing them throughout the whole day it's just kind of a stressful thing to have to just see somebody clicking over your shoulder all the time somebody you don't know and you don't even you can't even talk to them so if you have an option and the opportunity to hire somebody anybody even caterers uh, waitresses uh, wedding coordinator you know anybody that you can think of that could help you to make this bilingual multilingual event go a little more smoother give you some ideas give you some good tips and advice of how to run this event smoothly because like I I keep repeating myself but you know your main goal here is for your guests to feel included and for you to also to set up this foundation that This is who we are as a couple. This is who we want to be as a married couple. And this is who we should be as a whole family together. When we got together for events like this and celebrate, we do want to include both of our cultures. And plus, we also have other friends and families who have this third and fourth culture. And they also just make our life richer and uh, you know, just have, feel everybody included and happy, uh, ultimately what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> because wedding is really the start of this new life that you are having with your partner. It sets up the foundation, but don't think it too seriously because, you know, I only had a courthouse wedding and that didn't really uh, set the foundation for my marriage, <laughs> definitely not. But if you have this amazing opportunity and chance to plan a a beautiful wedding and to have a chance to make sure you incorporate everything that you want and set up the foundation for your future that is that is great and amazing but what I'm trying to say is that your guests are going to understand the dynamic of your relationships so you are because you are blending this culture together, you're using new multiple languages, traditions, food, because keeping up with your culture when you're living in abroad is very, very important. Like I said it in episode 24, if you want to listen that. And it's all about making this compromise, right? Where both families can just come together and accept who we are, accept our differences and compromise, compromise in our life and compromise in each other's life and be part of this fun ritual and be part of our each other's holidays and traditions. But ultimately, no matter what option you choose or how you plan out this whole wedding and it might not turn out the way you imagine, it might be worse or better, it really comes down to what the two of you honor as a relationship. What is important in your relationship? How do two of you communicate and find that common communication 
process or way to tell each other what you feel or think is really what matters. And if you are just being authentic and real uh, to everyone without trying to make something that's different than how you guys are with each other that would be really weird and awkward and people would feel like that it's not a a reality of your relationship so anyway if you just make everything authentic then everybody is going to feel the love and you know love anyway it is an universal language and a feeling that we all can have uh, even if we don't speak each other's languages Wow, what a beautiful way to finish this episode. I love when everything just comes together so nicely like this one. And I can leave you with this thoughts of everything is going to be okay. uh, No matter how your wedding actually turns out at the end because things are changing. You know, if your partner doesn't speak your language, maybe 5-10 years from now, they are going to because they're going to learn it. Or same with your in-laws or whoever other family members so the dynamics are going to change and it's just wedding is just one of those events and you're gonna have many many others all right guys this is the wrap for today thank you so much for sticking out all the way to the end i really hope that uh i was able to give you some tangible ideas that you can use on your wedding day If you have any questions or you want to ask something that was uh, confusing or you want to know more about it because uh, you really like the idea, you can always find me on Instagram and just DM me there and we can have a chat. Um, You know, I figure this out as I go to and I have, although I don't have experiences from my own wedding, but I do have a lot of experiences of our family and our friend communicate with each other when we are in bilingual relationship and marriage so the show notes and all the links that i mentioned in this episode you can find them at editpashadi.com forward slash multilingual wedding and if you want to grab the bilingual wedding invitation or you just want to check it out or take advantage of the discount I'm giving for all of you listening this podcast, you can just go on editbashadi.com forward slash bilingual wedding and that's all one word. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in again. Uh, Have a great day. Happy wedding planning. Uh, Good luck with all of your language learning journeys. And I will talk to you guys next week. Bye, everybody. (laughs) 